in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. Welcome to the world of physics. Due to coronavirus, we have to continue our online class. I would like to suggest you stay home, stay safe. Let me introduce. I am Mohammad Muktadir Hasan Bhuya, lecturer, Department of Physics. Now observe following diagram. Uh, what you have observed? Observe following diagram too. Nothing what you have observed in this diagram. Name of the chapter is Newtonian Mechanics and I am welcoming you all to the world of Newtonian Mechanics. In previous, previous topics, we have learned about rotational motion, moment of inertia, radius of coercion, angular momentum, and torque. And today, we are going to learn about centripetal force, centrifugal force, banking angle, and collision. Key points of today's lesson is centripetal force, centrifugal force, banking angle, and collision. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to use centripetal and centrifugal forces, explain the necessity of making the path inclined and the turnings, explain elastic and inelastic collisions, solve one dimensional elastic collision problems between two objects. At first, our first topic is centripetal force. Observe this diagram. A man is rotating a object with velocity v, and here uh, a force f is applied on this object. Consider Newton's first law: an object in motion remains in motion in a straight line at constant speed unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. Here, there is no external force. That's why the velocity and the speed will remain constant and there is no change in the speed in, in direction. But here, uh, is it accelerating? Here, uh, the velocity, um, magnitude of the velocity may be same, but the direction is changing with time. That's why we can think that here, the velocity changes their direction with time. Uh, then we get acceleration. And uh, this acceleration is centripetal acceleration. Acceleration at constant speed. This object is moving at constant speed. And here, rate of change of velocity is acceleration. Yes, it is accelerating. The velocity vector is constantly changing their direction. Uniform circular motion is the weird case of acceleration at constant speed. Centripetal acceleration here constantly redirects the velocity vector and always points towards the center of the circle that is AC. How can you calculate centripetal acceleration AC and what is the mathematical relationship between velocity and centripetal acceleration? Here the relation is AC is equal V square by R. Where does the equation come from? We can derive this by observing this diagram. 
at the point A, the velocity is VA. At the point B, the velocity is VV. Here, from A to B, the distance is D. And from A to B, the distance is uh, D. And D is equal V, D, v del T. And the change of velocity is del V. And similar, by using similar tri triangles, that means del V by V is equal V del T by R. And by putting this value uh, in acceleration equation, then after putting this value, we got the equation A is equal V square by RZ. Here, del V always points towards the center of the circle. It takes a force to cause an object to move in a circle. This force is called centripetal force. Here, the force is centripetal force and it takes a force to cause, the, cause an object to move in a circle. N types of physical force can provide a centripetal force. What supplies the centripetal force in this situation? Here, in this direction, the spring supplies the centripetal force. The centripetal force is the force of tension. The centripetal force is the force of, or the combination of force that point toward the center of the circle. What is the direction will it go? Here, what if the spring breaks? Which way will it go? Will the yo-yo go in this tangential direction? It flies off in straight line, tangent to the circle. It can't stay in circle unless a centripetal force is supplied, applied. A centripetal force causes an object to undergo centripetal acceleration, that is F is equal MA and the centripetal force and the acceleration vector must point in the same direction toward the center of the circle here the direction of the centripetal force and centripetal acceleration is towards the center of the circle and combining these two equation we know the equation for from the newton second law we can write F is equal MA and this is also the equation for centripetal force that is FC is equal MAC and previously we derived the equation that is A equal AC is equal V square by RG and AC equal to V square by R uh, that uh, by putting this fellow we get a new equation for centripetal force that is fc equal mv square by r that is the equation now the terms centripetal and centrifugal sound so similar of uh, what's the difference centripetal means central seeking a centripetal force is pushes inward toward the center of the circle centrifugal means center feeling center fleeing and centripetal the centrifugal force pushes outward away from the circle. One of these forces is referred to as fictitious, fictitious, and which one and why? Centrifugal force, imagine that you are a small child in a car making a sharp turn. As the car turns, you slide sideway across the seat until you are pressed against the far wall of the car unless you wear a seat belt it feels like a force is pushing you out of the circle why here it feels uh, you you are owing newton first law you are moving in straight line unless acted upon by a force uh, there is no actual force pushing you out of the circle. This is why, say, the centrifugal force is fictitious.
Now, once you reach the end of the set, the card door will push you on your push on you to keep you in the circle. And this actual force is the centripetal force. Here, the sent, sensation of uh, centrifugal force in the outward direction and centripetal force is in uh, in a uh, in a direction inward direction and uh, the centripetal acceleration is also in inward direction uh, be careful when solving mathematical problem related to circular motion and be conscious about the centripetal force and centrifugal force here a mathematical problem for you read this mathematical problem and here we have uh, some given uh, here we have to calculate r and the given value of a is 1 meter per second square and velocity is 30 meter per second uh, now uh, to calculate r we introduce the equation that is s is equal v square by rg and by putting all this value we can solve this mathematical problem and the uh, radius of the circle is 900 meter here uh, another problem uh, that is how much force is needed to create this acceleration for a 1200 kg car here fc is equal msc and uh, we got a uh, centripetal force that is 1200 newton uh, what is providing this force uh, that is static friction and uh, what might happen if the road is icy if uh, there is less than 1200 of friction available the car will slide off the road uh, tangent to the circuit. Here, from side view, we uh, we can observe this. The friction must point toward the center of the circle, and that is F f is equal mv square by r and uh, ff uh, is toward the center of the circle and mg is in, is in direction and uh, we have applied force in uh, that direction now uh, what does uh, high g mean uh, that is uh, this airplane a high velocity as it moves through a tight turn, resulting in a centripetal acceleration of 100 meter per second square. This is about 10 times the acceleration of gravity. That is, uh, we know the acceleration due to gravity. Uh, that is, g is equal 9.8 meter per second square. And uh, the centripetal force needed uh, on a 70 kg pilot would be 700, 7,000 Newton. And uh, we have uh, some halo and uh, at this acceleration the heart cannot pump blood to the brain and the pilot would lose consciousness here's a question for you read the question and here we have some information like uh, the speed of the car and radius of, of the track and the mass of the car with uh, driver. Now, what is the magnitude of the centripetal acceleration felt by the driver? Uh, we have to calculate AC and given value is V, R and M. We have a relationship that is AC equal V square by R. And uh, by putting all this value, we can solve this problem. And finally, we got AC is equal 7.7 .7 meter per second square. Here, uh, 
number B, what is the centimeter force acting on the mass? Uh, here we have to calculate uh, to calculate the centimeter force that is FC, and we have a relationship for FC is equal MAC, and all the values given here. And now we can calculate uh, FC is. 10,800 Newton and in this case of a car rounding a turn what will physical physical force is acting radially to keep the car moving in a circular path uh, here the path is circular and uh, the velocity of the car is V and radial distance is R and the sensation of centrifugal force is, outward is in outward direction and static friction between the tires and the road provide the centripetal force. Now, what is banking angle? Banking angle uh, can be defined as the angle at which any vehicle become inclined around the longitudinal axis with respect to the horizontal. And what is the banking of road? Banking of road is defined as the phenomenon uh, in which the as are raised for the curb road above the NRS to provide the necessary centripetal, centripetal force to the vehicles so that they take a safe turn. The angle at which the vehicle is inclined is defined as the banking angle. Observe this diagram, there, that is a banking of roads and uh, weight of the car is mg and uh, banking of the road is theta uh, and, and the normal force is n and uh, we can uh, resolve this in two direction uh, that is n cos theta and n sin theta similarly uh, here the direction is the direction of m n and uh, there is n cos theta and n sin theta uh, this is the angle uh, that is a uh, banking angle and uh, this ox is the horizontal surface and ua is the road surface bending of a cyclist in a curb road uh, observe this figure initially the cyclist uh, is uh, will be observed like that and uh, if the road is curved then bending of the cyclist in a curb road uh, this is the bending, bending and here the bending and ba or bending of him is the angle theta and uh, this is the reaction force and we can resolve this uh, as, as r sin theta and r cos theta here r cos theta is equal to mg uh, that is the weight of the object or weight of the cyclist and r sin theta provides centripetal force that is equal to Fc is equal mv square by Rg. And uh, here uh, the banking of road is uh, theta and the uh, distance of the road is, uh, distance between two sides of the road is L. Now we can calculate banking angle by using this equation into two components. The component R sin theta is acting towards the center of the uh, curve providing necessary centripetal force in circular motion and R cos theta is uh, equal to the weight and that is uh, then we can write the two equation that is R sin theta and R cos theta and uh, dividing these two, two equation we finally get an equation for uh, 10 theta is equal V square by Rg. Uh, observe this figure here r sin theta is equal to centripetal force and r cos theta is equal to mg uh, because they are in opposite direction and equal and uh, r sin theta um, acts towards the direction of centripetal force that's why we can write r sin theta is equal to Fc that is mv square by Rg. This is the equation for R sin theta is equal to mv square by R and R cos theta is equal mg. And after we get the equation, 
tan theta equal b square by rg and now we can also calculate the banking angle of inclined road uh, the distance between two side of the road is l and s is the elevation of the outer outer edge of, of the road then we can write sin theta equal h by l and uh, for small values of the angle theta we can write sin theta is equal to tan theta and finally we get the equation for tan theta is equal s by l is equal v square by rg by using this equation we can solve mathematical problem related to the banking angle of inclined road now our next topic is collision a uh, collisions have two types first one is elastic collision elastic collision in elastic collision uh, that is uh, we, uh, we got the momentum and kinetic energy are both conserved and in el in elastic collision only momentum is conserved there is no for information in collision for elastic collision we have uh, two things is conserved that is momentum and kinetic energy and for inelastic collision only momentum is conserved here at first we are going to explain inelastic collision first uh, in inelastic collision uh, two mass is m1 and m2 and their velocity is v1 and v2 and uh, this is the moment of collision uh, this is before collision the condition is before collision and it, it is uh, that happens after collision and we know the momentum before collision and the momentum after collision is equal and uh, that is uh, before collision the total momentum is m1 v1 plus m2 minus v2 here v2 is negative because v2 is in opposite direction of v1 and after collision we have uh, the equation m1 plus m2 into vf uh, here the mass is combined mass that is m1 plus m2 and uh, total final velocity that is vf and finally we can write the equation that is m1 v1 minus m2 v2 is equal to m1 plus m2 into vf and for final velocity we have this equation vf is equal m1 plus v1 minus m2 v2 divided by m1 plus m2 that is the equation for final velocity in inelastic collision now try to, um, try to uh, solve this mcq in an inelastic collision if the momentum is conserved then which of the following statement is true about kinetic energy okay Try to solve this and take five second time. I think you, you, you can solve this problem and read this question too. Here two objects collide and stick together and for total kinetic energy or in elastic collision, uh, which one will happen? Take five second time to solve this or pause this video and try to solve this MCQ. Here, our next part of collision that is elastic collision. For Elastic collision, the other general equation uh, here we have two bodies that is uh, MA and MV, and their velocity is VA1 and V1. And after collision, uh, their velocity is VA2 and VV2, and their mass didn't change uh, that is, their mass is MA and MB. And uh, by applying uh, two condition for elastic collision that is momentum is conserved and kinetic energy is conserved by using these two equation and uh, two condition for e elastic collision we got final velocity of the first object 
that is V A two, and final velocity of the second object that is V V two. Uh, two this two equation is more important for us, and we can derive this two equation by using uh, by applying the condition that is momentum is conserved and kinetic energy is conserved. If total momentum and total kinetic energy is conserved uh, in this uh, collision, that is elastic collision, and by applying these two condition, uh, we can derive two equation for the final velocity of the first object and the second object. Now, uh, if in uh, the elastic collision, if uh, the ball V is initially as uh, is at rest, that is uh, V one is zero, uh, cause the second object uh, that is uh, initially is at rest, and then we can uh, get this equation for final velocity of uh, first object and second object. The first uh, here V V one is zero, and the uh, we derive the equation for final velocity of the first object and second object will be like that uh, cause our first term is zero uh, v, here uh, total v v1 is zero and uh, by putting uh, this v v1 zero we got these two equation in this way and by using this equation we can uh, derive uh, we can calculate the final velocity of the first object and final velocity of the second object. For elastic collision, we apply a condition that is uh, the first object, the mass of the first object and the second object is same and our second object that is uh, object B is at rest and that's why the condition is V V one is zero, and their mass are same. And after collision, their final velocity for uh, for the first object is zero, and uh, final velocity for the second object is equal to the initial velocity of the first object. Uh, that is important for us because we apply. A condition apply to condition that is at first our first object is uh, is pressed and um, after a collision the in the body a will uh, is at rest and the second body uh, that is uh, body b uh, will move uh, in one dimension way and their final velocity is equal to the initial velocity of our second object uh, and this is the uh, mathematical condition uh, that is vv2 is equal vv1 and the uh, final velocity of, uh, of the object a uh, is zero by this way they can interchange their final velocity uh, by this way they can interchange their velocity Example of some special cases of collision that is, if M1 and M2, that is uh, the mass of the first and second object is same, uh, they are uh, then the particle will exchange their velocities uh, that we have discussed in this slide. And uh, second special case is when a heavy particle collides ahead with a very light one. Initially at rest, the heavy particle continue in motion unentered and light particle rebounds with a speed of about twice the initial speed of the heavy particles. And a uh, third special case is when a very light particle collide had with a very, very heavy particle initially at rest, uh, the light particle has its velocity Reverse and the heavy particle remains approximately at rest. This is the three condition 
three special cases for collision. In first one, the velocity will interchange. Uh, for if the mass uh, masses is equal, and uh, second for second condition, uh, here two object. One of them is light, and another one is heavy, and uh, if the heavy particle um, strike the light particle then the velocity of the heavy particle will not change and the light particle will move with the velocity that is uh, twice the initial speed of the heavy particle and in our third condition a third special case uh, here we also have a collision between a light and heavy particle and uh, if the light particle struck the Struck the heavy particle and uh, heavy particle is a heavy particle in initially is at rest and the light particle uh, has its velocity reverse and the heavy particle remain appro approximately at rest because the uh, position of the heavy particle will not change and the light particle will go back to. Uh, their initial position and uh, that is in reverse direction and the velocity uh, is in reverse direction uh, their velocity will change change and uh, that is in reverse direction but the heavy particle will not change their uh, position and they will keep in uh, the, keep in rest approximately uh, these are the condition for a collision, a special cases of collision, and now uh, try to solve this MCQ in an industry collision. And the momentum is conserved. Then, which of the following statement is true about about kinetic energy? Uh, there for collision, I, I hope all of you will uh, solve this MCQ. Here the kinetic energy is also conserved, and when kinetic energy is conserved, uh, when kinetic energy is conserved, in which condition I uh, you know? Now for elastic collision, total kinetic energy, the kinetic energy is conserved. That is D, and uh, when a, a light a light baseball rolling with a speed of six meter per second collides with a heavy exercise ball at rest. The uh, baseball's speed after the collision will be approximately uh, that is, uh, if take 10 to 15 second time to solve this problem. Uh, this is the third condition for the collision between a light and heavy particle. A light particle, uh, light bit ball is uh, rolling with a speed of six meters per second, and uh, they stack with a heavy ball. And uh, after collision, uh, we know the light ball will go back to their initial condition uh, that is in reverse direction, and the velocity. Uh, after collision that is six meter per second for the uh, bridge ball but uh, their direction is in opposite direction uh, this is a mathematical problem for you try to solve this uh, this is homework for you and we are going to discuss another condition, another problem related to collision. That is, uh, we are going to discuss uh, a ballistic pendulum, and um, mass of the pendulum is capital M, and a body of mass small m, and its initial velocity is v naught. If uh, it is stuck with the heavy object that is m, and uh, it gets final velocity v and go in upward direction and uh, reach at the height of 8 
here uh, the total momentum will remain conserved and here total energy will remain conserved and for ballistic pendulum find the speed of the bullet here the initial speed of the bullet is p and the mass is m and for pendulum the mass is m and after collision their total their velocity is capital v and it go in upward direction and that is uh, also in circular direction and here uh, it reaches to a height of a height h and here total moment, momentum will remain conserved and we know for the conservation of momentum that is before uh, momentum and after momentum will will be equal that is the condition for conservation of momentum and uh, by using the equation for conservation momentum here the equation is for conservation momentum is mv is equal m plus m into v and uh, by observing this figure we can write this equation and finally uh, we get the velocity of the pendul uh, pend pendulum with the bullet that is v is equal mv by m plus m and this is the equation by which we can uh, get the speed of the bullet and here another, bell uh, another bell ballistic pendulum and uh, by this we can uh, derive this equation and uh, here total energy will remain conserved and we know from the conservation of energy uh, our equation is uh, for uh, del u plus del k that is total potential energy and total kinetic energy uh, and some of the total potential and kinetic energy uh, will not change uh, that is the conservation of uh, conservation of energy the conservation of mechanical energy and the equation uh, we can write this equation for total potential energy and total kinetic energy that is, that will be equal for uh, for this condition of ballistic pendulum and by putting the value of v here uh, we have this equation gh is equal to half mv plus uh, mv divided by m plus capital, uh, capital m whole square and uh, the speed of the bullet uh, that is small v is equal m plus m divided by m root over of 2 gs uh, that is the equation by which we can calculate the value of uh, speed of the bullet here is a question for you uh, that is uh, try to solve this this is homework for you i would suggest you to pause this video and try to solve this and if you find any difficulties then ask me in our class time and then i'm secure for you and try to solve this mcq here to observe collide and bounce off each other and their linear momentum uh, which condition will apply to their linear momentum here we have for condition and which one is applicable for the condition of uh, two object collide and bounce off each other and their linear momentum and which condition will apply to their linear momentum and then the question for you that is a 100 kg football uh, linebacker uh, moving a 2 meter per second tackles ahead on 80 kg halfback running 2 meter per second neglecting the effect due to digging in of plates and which condition will apply for this football linebacker here we have four options and try to solve this by yourself 
and summary of my of our today's lesson there is in an elastic collision total kinetic energy is also conserved in an inelastic collision some kinetic energy is lost in a completely inelastic collision the two objects stack together after the collision and the center of mass of a system is the point at which external force can be considered to act and this is some more for you and uh, that is uh, another more for you okay you maybe have have some question related to our topic be aware about coronavirus and thank you all for joining with us and stay home stay safe allah hafiz make the best use of your time thank you all